if you get your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe we all watched in horror 911 the planes hit the towers and the towers came down did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange? There were no fighter jets. Did someone give the order not to intercept? And if they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. And where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with Welcome children. Welcome to another episode of 9-11 was an inside job. We have lots and lots to talk about today. And you see right behind me is one of the first stories. Let me see if I can find that one right here on my desk. But uh, yeah, here we go. This is the one we were talking about, the Somali bombers, uh, the Christmas bomber here in Portland. And remember back then I was just so furious that the FBI had let another gullible kid become a terrorist but just because of their help. But take a look at this behind here. The, the FBI is obviously quite pleased with itself over its arrest of a 19-year-old Somali-American Mohammed Osman Mohammed, who, with months of encouragement, support, and money from the FBI's own undercover agents, allegedly, allegedly attempted to detonate a bomb. All right, well, it's, it's just amazing the way things work. The power structure manipulates you all the time. Now, we've got a great example. Have you been watching what's going on in Egypt right now? Man, I know how those people feel. I felt that way in, in 1970 when we thought that we were actually going to achieve some sort of, you know, social change in our country. It turned out that the power structure manipulated everything in such a way that, you know, they, they didn't lose a step in their military industrial complex. We didn't change a thing, but we sure felt good trying. And that's what's going to happen in Egypt. We already see it happening. There, they, the, the peaceful protesters, by the way, there's two types of reporting. If you, and I strongly recommend you go to Democracy Now! and all their last few days, the last week, has been archived like they always do, but extremely good reporting by uh, the producer of Democracy Now!, who's an Egyptian, and he went to Egypt to report on this. He's probably, they say he's uh, number four tweeter in the world right now. I don't know who the first three are. But anyway, the point is, you look at Democracy Now! and you see the story about the, the peaceful protesters, not a single weapon. And yet, when the fighting breaks out because the Mulberic forces brought guns, camels, horses, sticks, stones, swords, knives to this, you know, to attack this peaceful crowd, then CNN reports a clash between opposing forces without identifying the fact that, no, it isn't. It's a, it's a staged attack by the Mulberic government who trucked in, bust in, unemployed people and others to, you know, other thugs just to break it up. That isn't being reported by CNN. That's being reported by Democracy Now. If you want to get the truth, I'd go to them, even though they do a horrible job on 9-11. All right, well, I guess the next thing to go to would be, uh, last time I was talking about Sybil Edmonds. Remember, they were talking about uh, the whistleblowers. How come we don't have more whistleblowers? Go to CG2. 
and uh, the CG2, it's the complete censor censorship of Sybil Edmonds. Um, there, remember I was talking about everything that she said to the 9-11 Commission was redacted. Every single word of three and a half hours of testimony. And um, by the way, 9-11 Truth News is a great place to get 9-11 related news. Now we're going to go to CG14. It's kind of on the same subject, but this is, she, this CG that's up there now was about her being the most gagged uh, person in history. And now this is the bombshell that she released when she was on the Mike Malloy radio show. Some of you are, you are familiar with that. But uh, former FBI translator Sybil Edmonds dropped a bombshell on the Mike Malloy radio show, guest hosted by Brad Friedman. In the interview, Sybil, Sybil, <laughs> Sybil Edmonds says that the U.S. maintained intimate relations with bin Laden and the Taliban all the way until the day of September 11th. These in intimate relations included using bin Laden for operations in Central Asia, including uh, the Xinjiang province, or Xinjiang, China, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, these operations involved using Al-Qaeda and the Taliban in the same manner as we did during the Afghan and Soviet conflict, that is, fighting enemies via proxies. So, you know, it's, it's just being staged, folks, and people like Sybil Edmonds are the way we know what's going on. Um, now, let's see, I'm going to just kind of keep rushing right on through this. Let's go, to, let's jump to CG6 now. Um, remember, I mentioned last time about John Gold was going to be locking himself to the White House fence. I'll move over, whoops, wrong way. I'll move over so you can see him there. But uh, on December 16th, he, he uh, announced that he would do an act of civil disobedience on the, in front of the White House. And uh, anyway, let's see. The, he says uh, when he had a conversation with a police officer. Let, let me get down to the bottom here. The, the police immediately took, what's that? Talk to the microphone. OK. Sorry, folks. Um, the police immediately took out their crime scene tape and set up a perimeter. Here I was all by myself in the middle of a crime scene. I have to admit, aside from the officer that tried to intimidate me, the other officers were extremely friendly. One walked up to me and asked me if I needed a pair of gloves. Another asked if the cuffs around his wrists were too tight. Um, anyway, as, I, as he was at the fence, two plainclothes individuals walked up and asked me a few questions. I thought they were from the media, but as it turns out, they were from the Secret Service. The agent asked my number, my address, and what my intentions were. I said we were lied to about 9-11, and I'm going to bring attention to that fact because the media isn't doing it. He again asked about my intentions, and in the back of my mind, it occurred to me that maybe he thought I was someone like the Tucson shooter, and I said, my intentions are what I told you. I am nonviolent. He said, that's all I wanted to know, and he left. Then he says, uh, he was amazed at how quickly they let him go. From the time he was put in the car... Until the time he was processed, it took no longer than 45 minutes. So, you know, they wanted to not, they wanted to make that a non-issue as much as they possibly could. Um, let's see, we're going to go now to another issue. Remember, they were talking about every time you talk about 9-11, somebody, you know, walks in and arrogantly, smugly says, you're insulting the memory of our dead people and you're, and, and you're hurting the family members who are grieving over their loss. Well, to put the BS to that story, we're going to go to CG 11. And 9-11 uh, family members demand answers from commission. They still haven't gotten answers that they've asked over and over again. In a public statement issued today, members of the 9-11 Steering Committee demanded a prompt response from the former chairman and executive director of the 9-11 Commission regarding former FBI language specialist Biru Sajar's censored testimony to the commission. The press release was prompted by recently released documents relating to interviews conducted by the 9-11 Commission published at cryptome.org. That's a good place. C-R-Y-P-T-O-M-E dot org. You ought to visit that. They've, they're like WikiLeaks in a way. Um, anyway, the entire record was not included. I mean, the entire testimony was not included, and so the 9-11 members are suing. So 
I'm going to move right along here. Uh, let's see. Well, the uh, I don't know. Last week I showed you, uh, told you a story about the uh, extension of the uh, uh, state of emergency that they've renewed every single year since 9/11. Well, here's another one. CG number ten. The 9-11 war extended beyond 2014. Yep. The, the U.S.-led NATO military alliance says handing over security matters to Afghan forces could take place well beyond 2014, uh, 2014 target date set in some areas in Afghanistan. In other words, we've got no intention to get out of there. And this already supposedly the longest war in history. Now... I'm I'm just briefly going through these things so that you folks can learn to uh, uh, learn what's out there and then go look them up yourself if you're really interested and you see that the headlines on the screen um, and while we're talking about FBI think about this the FBI has just recently admitted to hundreds of violations when you know in investigating national security CG12 the next one it's FBI involved in hundreds of violations in national security investigations. The FBI disclosed to a presidential board that it was involved in nearly 800 violations of laws, regulations, or policies governing national security investigations from 2001 to 2008, but the government won't provide details or say whether anyone was disciplined, according to a report by a privacy watchdog group. So the FBI is just working independent of the law. It doesn't matter. Violations of the law. So what? Nobody cares. Nobody knows. Nobody can tell what is actually happening. Man, I, I just can't get over all the stuff that's going on. And, it, you know, we were talking about Egypt. What we're going to see there it is, you know, we went through the squashing of our good feelings in the 70s. Uh, the, they systematically squashed every advance that we had made until we have what we have today. And in Egypt, it's not going to be any different, I'm sad to say. It would be great to see democracy spread through the Arab world because they have protests everywhere, and that's not being reported here. But look what's happening. Obama is conniving, they call it meeting, but conniving with Mubarak to extend the policies that are already what the Egyptians are complaining about. The corrupt policies will go on, but they're going to change the faces of the people in government to somebody else. Now this time it's, I, I don't have the name in front of me, but the guy that they just appointed, Suleiman, is that his name? Vice President, and they're supposedly going to make him president after Mubarak steps down, but he's our CIA connection for uh, that illegal rendition, the kidnapping of people and taking them to other countries for torture. This is our contact in Egypt for that. This, he's known as a CIA lackey, and that's who they're putting in power in Egypt? Do you think that's going to satisfy anybody there? God. And we can see that happening here so easily because the news is reporting things like that. You know, you have to go to certain news. Here we never see that happening until it's done, and then we have to look at it and say, my God, we've, look at all, everything we've lost. Now... We just had in the news, we're going to go to CG9, and we just had in the news a story about a 48-year-old detainee who just died in Guantanamo. He's been there for nine years without charges. Guantanamo detainees have been holding daily peaceful protests against the jail's continuous existence. You don't hear about that, do you? They're protesting to close the jail like Obama swore he would. But that's just another thing. You see what they did with the Obama election? They changed faces, but cha did not change policy, unless you count making policies that were in existence worse. Bush policies have been upped by Obama, not, not destroyed, not crashed like Obama promised. Obama lied to us, and all the mealy mouth mush that he gives us that everybody compliments him on how well he speaks and how well he writes speeches or reads speeches, whatever, and how he connects to the people. But he lies to you. He lies to us, and he didn't do any of any of.